good morning i think uh, first of all a great appreciation for this unique conference with dr sanjay and dr here <coughs> sarda and other all the team members i think uh, this is a very unique concept these days again that we should have some customized exercise prescription uh, similar to a drug exercise has to be prescribed in modality dose frequency and not only a pathology but also a personalized patient approach and new data are needed to make this new science not only evidence based and personalized but also a precision approach so this is a very very important statement from the american college of sports of medicine i think uh, plato in 400 bc told that in order for man to succeed in life god provided two means first the education and the physical activity lack of activity destroy the good condition of every human being while movement and methodological physical exercise can save it and preserve it is so true these days also and if you see here that for every one hour of aerobic exercise you do you add two hours of life span and your general health so there are amazing signs of exercise these days going on but that is not the problem problem is why do we do we fail to follow and i urge you not to just to listen my lecture here for your knowledge sake for <coughs> experience it know is the science and adapt in your life that will be the motive of my lecture but definitely a exercise prescription is not a new thing even the sutra in 6 600 before the ce of india he was the first physician to prescribe moderate daily exercise to his patients and the modern time the hippocrates even he gave the father of we know the father of science of the medicine who was the first physician to provide a written pre exercise prescription so this is very very important issue whenever we generate a prescription for exercise there are few key elements you assess your patient determine the priority what are the priority of the health issues the third is identify patient capacity and intervention suitability and then you generate exercise prescription by total exercise dose it is just like a medicine dose the mode what should be the intensity what should be the frequency what should be the duration and how it will progress and then you should monitor education and bring the behavior change and then reassessment and prescription modification so these are very very important issues dj especially for the type 2 diabetes and many other comorbidities associated conditions so i told you that the components of exercise prescription and we will deal for that what what should be the type of exercise should be walking swimming cycling or some specific workloads and duration and frequency how much and then the intensity guidelines are the target heart rate and these days the rpe that is very very important rpe that is the preserved perceived exertion experience that is very very important so we will this for that so first we need to generate exercise prescription even though exercise prescription has become a popular topic these days it is still a novel science that needs to be developed remember and today there is lack of evidence based clinical practice and conclusive guidelines in the light of that suppose in my clinic i have just generated one prescription like this where i give 10 minutes to my patient first thing is the fit the frequency intensity type and time and then we see the status ki oh not active it is not active or not even the intention is there or not or some activity but not enough and that lastly the recommended about the food care aerobic type resistance type heat or yoga or whatever it may be as you know the minimum of 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous intensity aerobic exercise has been advised or recommended by the ada and other important guidelines but the question is what is missing here 
So what is missing is the MOBE. That is the move to optimize your vitality and enjoyment. If you simply give a prescription like this, you just write, you do a 30 minutes of walking and this and this and this, patients are not going to follow that. I think a famous diabetic eminent person from the Mumbai, Dr. Bhaskar, he once told me, and he has also written that, all the diet charts we formulate for our patients, most of us are going to the dustbin. So I don't want that this prescription also go to the dustbin. So what to do? You enjoy, you add the enjoyment and effectiveness of the exercise. That is the most important element. So that is these days known as F-I-T-T-E-E. -E. Fit E-E, -E, that is the enjoyment and effectiveness. So this, I think we could work. You choose to move. And you just ask your patient, what do you like? You like walking, you like swimming, playing, dancing, yoga, gym going, gardening, what do you like? And accordingly you do for that. And then you assess in the beginning what could be the positive adherence variables and what are the negative adherence variables. Adherence regions for communicating that there could be the physical fitness, weight and figure control or relaxation, enjoyment or fun, I told you. And then the non-adherence fact regions, you give some time for that. The time restraints, lack of self-motivation, the seasonal conditions. Patients will say you, most of my diabetic patients when they come, sir, you tell to do exercise every day and I tell for 60 minutes, abhi barsat hai, uske baad phir garmi hai, aur uske paas phir jada hai. So it is so cold, so heat, so raining, so what to do? So that is it. Also the boredom of the dislike of activity. So think about it. Then you assess about in your diabetic patients, whether they are suffering from some nervous system disease, metabolic system disease, or urinary system disease, and accordingly we will deal and we will tell you what to do. So first thing is, in our practice, we have some sort of medical clearance. Like individuals should not begin exercise if the blood glucose is more than 250, if moderate or high levels of blood or urinary ketones are present. So these are some of the things which has been given. And for anyone, usually insulin or taking sulfonylurea, it is important to carry rapid acting carbohydrate source to prevent the hypoglycemia. And then I told about the RPE, that is the rating of perceived excursion, and that is rating has been basically one to 10. And that is very important. If a patient is thinking very, he is doing very light activity, the one, or if it is doing very vigorous activity, in, and he is thinking, I am doing very vigorous activity, the seven to eight, and like that, it is very easy to follow it. The sec next part in my exer exercise prescription, before I tell them that you go for 20 minutes or 30 minutes or 60 minutes, tell a bit about science of exercise to your patient. If you are not explaining this, the whole problem will persist and your exercise prescription will doom to fail. So in the very short, you tell them what is happening. Exercise is a billion dollar drug and never gets prescribed. This gentleman, the Phil Sutherland, is a type one patient. And he, he has written a book known as Not Dead Yet. Uh, just I think I will urge you to read that book how he has uh, formulated a type 1 no diabetic novo, this team, and he has done so, this, this patient has done so many work that we are following in our ADA guidelines these days. There are lots of exercise benefits you know. So you tell that insulin is not, I tell, okay, look, when you do exercise, Insulin is not required for glucose to enter into the cell when you do exercise. This is a form of non-insulin dependent glucose intake, uptake, known as, remember, CMGU. That is contraction mediated uptake occurs when you do exercise. This is a great thing, great knowledge. That, that insulin is not at all needed when you contract your muscles when the muscle will move, insulin is not needed, the sugar will burn, 
and glucose level will come down, he will do exercise. So essentially, muscle contraction allows glucose to enter the cell. The second thing that these days there is a misconception that only doing aerobic is okay. This is not okay. The science is telling you that resistance exercise is very, very important. Uh, due to, and this resistance training is more effective in improving this, this GLUT4 number and the function, and highly effective in slowing sarcopenia these days. Dr. Rusha was also showing you the sarcopenic obesity, like a just epidemic. So thus to slow the sarcopenic obesity or sarcopenia, which has a close association with type 2 diabetes, you need resistance exercise. And you can see here what are the benefits with aerobics and what are the with resistance. If you see the strength, muscle fiber size, natural adaptations, I have not <coughs> exercise performance, there, may, there are many things where only resistance exercise can bring the advantage, not the aerobics. So what to do? Even if you want in these COVID days to boost your immunity, you see here what is happening. Billions of lymphocytes are mobilized in response to just a single bout of exercise. Are you aware? Billions of lymphocytes, particularly if the exercise is a dynamic and taxes the cardiorespiratory system like running, cycling, or rowing. So this is a very, very important thing. And I tell my, so I show this cartoon to my patients, that your mitochondria is the same as you can see without activity. And if you are doing exercise daily, it becomes green. So my slogan is, make your mitochondria green. That patient comes to understand that something very important is being told. So there is a science here, I will not go in details, but definitely this happens. Then I tell you what tell about the type of exercise. If you see here, even the short-term aerobic exercise improves insulin sensitivity, improves mitochondrial, mitochondrial function, and if you do vigorous aerobic exercise for seven days, they may improve glycemia without lowering body weight. The type, but. Uh, Short-term aerobic exercise in individuals with obesity and type 2 improves whole body insulin action through gains in peripheral insulin sensitivity, more so than the hepatic insulin sensitivity. Then the second thing is the resistance. I told you about that, that resistance exercise training in type 2 diabetes typically results in 10 to 15 percent improvements in strength, bone mineral density, blood pressure, lipid profiles, skeletal muscle mass, and insulin sensitivity. So which one is better? This is, gives you the whole picture of what resistance exercise is doing, but which one is better? Definitely the combined is better. There will be a greater reduction in hv one and it will be superior to either mode alone. You can see here, if you're only doing aerobics, it enhances insulin sensitivity 20%, remember 20%. And even the reduction of the hv one 0.4 to 0.5%, but if you do combine, the insulin sensitivity increases by 70%. And you see here the lowering of hv one occurs 0.9%. It is better than any drug. It is better than any drug. Now, what are the physiological components of common exercise activities? You are see here, ki if you are doing yoga, walking, jogging, cycling, dancing, uh, what are the, how much resistance it is bringing to you, and how much aerobic components? components. And these days, people say, I don't have time, it's 10 minutes of time. Tell them to do the high hit, that is the high intensity interval exercise. Only 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes. Go and read about it. Consider superior to low intensity training. So this is a very, very important concept. And even the moderate intensity continuous training is very MICT. Or sprint interval training, all are very, very important concept. About running, people do not talk about that. But remember that only running every 5 to 10 minutes per day and even a slow speed, 6 miles per hour, is associated with markedly reduced risk of death from all causes and cardiovascular disease. And this study may motivate healthy but sedentary individuals to begin. So this is run if you can. If you don't have time, just run for 5 to 10 minutes. That will, could be important. Again, 
in rainy days and even every day i think the yoga is has been being promoted and now lots of research is going on world even the usa that yogic practices improve insulin sensitivity and reduce the insulin resistance and if you can do nothing sorry i think uh, sometimes you your patient will ask, tell you ki yeah, i don't have 20 minutes 30 minutes what to do i tell you only give me 5 to 10 minutes you do the 12 rounds of surya namaskara so important and this is totally scientific studies best whatever i am talking about you it is a very very big science ki by doing surya namaskara you get aerobics component and also you get the resistance component component which improves everything then intermittent sitting lagatar baithne ka jo habit hai that is killing us so ek do ghanta baith ke this is very very important the trials has shown this day this interrupted prolonged period of sitting with 15 minutes of walking after meals even is important so you go for that and there are lots of signs for that you how even the intermittent sit this movement is so important if you can patient can do nothing you tell about do the about the daily movement many house uh, wife comes to our patient as a patient bolte hai mere ko sir din bhar time nahi hai ki main kaam karenge but when we ask about ki what you do in your house uh, amazingly they are doing lots of daily works and that is even very very important lots of studies are there even there are some studies showing that dog ownership and physical activities has some evidence it improves many many things and it because it motivates also you so this is a very also important so i will not go in detail ki this 2020 what are the exercise physical activity and the type 2 that there are consensus statements regarding the aerobics resistance flexibility balance everyone saying you 150 minutes of walking per week i don't think uh, this is uh, good for india uh, my slogan is at least 60 minute walking per day this will bring you the desired changes which we want because we are taking lots of carbohydrates and uh, we are already there are some genetic uh, components other things so 60 minutes remember so these are all available now of the patients will again ask you ki sir kis time mein kare सुबह में टाइम नहीं मिलता है तो क्या करें नाउ द रिसर्च इज सोइंग देन इवन द इवनिंग वर्कआउट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आई विल नॉट गोइंग डिटेल बट द रिसर्च इज देयर दैट द आफ्टरनून एक्सरसाइज इज मोर इफिकेशियस देन द मॉर्निंग एक्सरसाइज इन इंप्रूविंग द ब्लड ग्लूकोज लेवल्स इन इंडिविजुअल विथ टाइप टू डायबिटीज यू कैन सी हियर वट इज हैपनिंग विद द मॉर्निंग एक्सरसाइज एंड वेन द सेम अमाउंट ऑफ एक्सरसाइज विद सेम इंटिसिटी बींग डन इन दोज को होट्स the getting better control of the glucose and other parameters with the afternoon exercise so may phir bhi the i think the take home message will be ki whatever time your patient gets tell him to do even at 12 night no problem 8 o'clock any time so this will be better so but anyway the science is saying you that the afternoon exercise is more efficacious because the glucose tolerance insulin sensitivity and muscle oxidative capacity so circadian oscillation oscillation so that is the reason you why it is more efficacious now the patient ki sir kitna kare which is and if i ask you you which one more important intensity or duration which one zyada intensity ka exercise kare ki zyada der tak kare the current research clearly says that intensity is more important than the duration at low intensity for an extended period of time the fat becomes the primary fuel source and this is far less efficacious at the lowering the blood glucose levels and intensity ranging from moderate to high utilize more carbohydrate for fuel therefore are more efficacious at low lowering the blood glucose madam please tell me 2 minutes before yeah now the last point or last part of my talk will be ki kitna kare and if you see this story ki this why this fetifites uh, die from the marathon itself the greeks sent their the fastest runner fetifites to carry home news of the victory he sprinted 26.2 miles from the battle site to the city state of the athens and he arrived and said rejoice we conquer and died from the exhaustion the marathon race is named after his this event you know so we need customized exercise prescription this is the reason 
And in our diabetic patient, the dose matters. Like there are lots of scenarios of patients are coming. Could be the newly detected, no comorbidities. The second scenario could be oh, osteoarthritis of both knees, could have the proliferative retinopathy, some have, might have the CKD, some might have the C CHF. So there is science these days, you having autonomic neuropathy, peripheral neuropathy, with pregnancy, many cardiac issues, you need the, to apply those signs. Even you have to concern with the hypoglycemia, you how to prevent that. And concern with the hyperglycemia, when not to do that. And non-diabetic medications, like someone is taking like beta blockers, which blunt the heart response to exercise and lower the maximum aerobic capacity to 87% of expected via negative inotropic effects or beta blockers or, or other things. So this knowledge is also important. But the important points are the autonomic neuropathy, be aware of an increased likelihood of hypoge, abnormal blood pressure responses, and impaired thermoregulation as well as elevated resting and blunted maximal heart rate. So take a step to prevent the dehydration and hyperthermia and hypothermia in those cases. So there are some of the things you will get in the, all the ADA guidelines, and they are in all the sports medicine guidelines. In autonomic neuropathy, what to do? What to do with the peripheral neuropathy? We have to limit the exercise part participation that may cause food trauma, not weight wearing exercise. But I will only touch about like diabetic retinopathy is very, very important. But remember, the moderate intensity physical activity is associated with a lower risk of diabetic retinopathy. And mild non-proliferative retinopathy, all activities we permit, but early eye is needed for the moderate non-proliferative disease, activity like power lifting, which may significantly increase blood pressure should be avoided. Sorry to interrupt, sir. But Two so in retinopathy, then also it is very important for to improve your erectile dysfunction, which is a huge problem these days. But it improves exercise, and most of my, my patients, I don't use any medications. I only exert, do this, tell them about to do that, and this improves their function. So it also improves your the sex drives of women and all the men. Only, well, only two minutes. And type 1 diabetic also, there are lots of things what to be done and what to be not done. You should be aware about that. In the hypertensive cases, in the diabetic kidney disease, so everywhere there is role of even the CKD with a stable angina, with pacemakers, with post coronary neoplasty, lots of in pregnancy also. It is very, very important. You should be aware about all those things. I think uh, for next two or three slides I will show you, and I will end here with the exercise and diabetic foot ulcer. But last point is here, see here, the exercise in older adults and diabetes. This is again a huge gray zone. And I think you will remember this poem by our great ex-Prime Minister Atal Bihari Bajpayee, which said that the age of the age, 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 and this is also very, very important. So final points are, each type 2 diabetic patient or type 1 diabetic patient is unique. Do assess what sort of exercise suits. Do in cardiac aerobics, resistance exercise in yoga, do generate an exercise prescription, and do not sit if you can stand. Do not stand if you can walk, and do not walk if you can run. Thank you very much. Thank you.